Hi, I'm Ruby Miller, and today I'm going to be talking about the epigenetic role of gene NR3C1 in mental disorders. Epigenetics involves the studying of how environmental factors affect gene function. In Figure 1, it demonstrates how epigenetic marker markers will attach itself to the chromatin. Epigenetic mechanisms can also include, but are not limited to, histone modification, DNA methylation, and the control of gene expression through non-coding RNA. Although D DNA sequences are fixed, the epigenome is highly dynamic and can be influenced by external factors. External factors such as traumatic experiences or being placed into a stressful environment may affect these epigenetic changes, which can also lead to the development of mental disorders. When studying DNA methylation in individuals with mental disorders, there were similar changes observed in the glucocorticoid receptor gene NR3C1. The studying of the specific gene can lead to the development of future methods of studying epigenetics involvement in mental disorders. In addition, the findings from this research could potentially aid in a better understanding of mental disorders, as well as allow further research into potential treatments for some mental disorders. All research collected throughout the presentation is from researching numerous studies involving the NR3C1 gene. To begin, the NR3C1 gene has been shown to have a correlation in stress response within rats. While studying rats, the glucocorticoid receptor gene was studied as maternal stress was placed upon offspring. Offspring received a low amount of maternal care for a 10-day period, and afterwards there were signs of increased methylation from this gene, as well as anxiety-related behavior within the offspring. In addition, the increased levels caused a decrease in the receptor expression and caused an impaired negative feedback sensitivity of the hypothalamus pituitary adrenaline axis within the brain. A similar study was conducted when researching the implications of the glucocorticoid responsiveness in the brain found that there was less correlation of the histone protein at the amino terminal region. Laura Kuller wanted to further study rats and decided to compare the hypothalamic pituitary adrenaline region between rats and humans. She found that there were changes within the NR3C gene as well, and these changes were found within the promoter region of the gene. A previous study showed evidence of the DNA hypermethylization of the CPG residues as well within the NR3C1 gene, and this henceforth triggered an allostatic response within rats. To further Laura's study on humans, she decided to investigate the DNA methylation changes within humans. She found that there were significant changes within people at risk of suicide who had experienced trauma within their childhoods. And this brings me into my next topic of maternal effects on humans. Firstly, maternal methylation levels were studied within pregnant women who had gone through natural disasters or other traumatic events. These mothers showed increased methylation within the NR3C1 gene and also had reported symptoms of depression and anxiety. To further the study, some of the children born from these mothers had been reported to have shown signs of anxiety throughout their childhood, although this cannot be determined to be related to the mother's increased methylation during her present pregnancy. Victoria Chua also decided to study the methylation in humans and studied family trios who had shown depressive symptoms. The study could not find that a relationship between adolescent DNA methylation and depressive symptoms. However, there was a significant association between maternal depressive symptoms and maternal epigenetic patterns within the NR3C1 gene. Childhood role in depressive disorders has shown to be a role in many studies. In figure two, it demonstrates multiple studies being conducted on adults who had experienced trauma of some kind within their childhood. Their symptoms are, were then reported as MDD, standing for major depressive disorder, and their change in methylation index was reported in the second to last column. To add on to this, Dr. Gowen decided to study the level of hybridized M or 3C1 mRNA in the cytoplasm and found that there was a low level of N or 3C1 R N mRNA observed in individuals who had a co-occurring child abuse and depression. Although unlike previous studies, this had 
changes within the exon 5 in the NR3C1 gene, despite other studies showing changes within the promoter region. To further study the NR3C1 gene's role, the impact therapy was studied to see if the methylation could be reverted. The DNA methylation was recorded before and after treatment within both studies I will mention. The NR3C1 gene as well as the FKBP5 gene were both studied due to their importance in the regulatory function of the HPA axis within the brain. The first study conducted was based on PTSD in veterans. The amount of methylation in the brain was collected before, after, and in three months after therapy had occurred. Higher nr 3C1 methylation levels were associated with lower post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms. However, these levels did not change over the course of therapy. Although there was a significant change in the FKBP5 methylation, it uncovered that there was a decrease associated with positive treatment outcome. Anxiety disorders were then studied in children, similar to the PTS study. This study found that there was significant changes between the DNA methylation in CPG sites and the outcome of the FKPP5 gene. In contrast to the PTSD study, there was a decrease in methylation when associated with greater reduction in symptom severity. Overall, these studies, all these studies were found important. The D, the DNA methylation within the NR3C1 gene within rats proved that it does have an impact on anxiety disorders. It proves that there is an increased reactivity associated with maternal separation, as well as showing that MR3C1 implicated in early life stress in rodents is relevant. In addition, through comparing it with humans and finding those similarities, it shows that the NR3C1 gene does have a significance in brain function in both rats and humans, and therefore poses potential for further study of rodent brains to further our understanding our own mental disorders. The mother's methylation throughout her pregnancy showed that mother methylation could be studied to determine as a child's risk of developing a mental disorder. This could prevent children from developing a mental disorder by taking precautions when they have a high risk. This could include therapy as well as other methods of helping with their men potential mental disorders. In addition, low maternal care leading to depressive disorder has been shown within the chart. Specifically, the last column, the last row of the chart showing that the group had parents who had PTSD, which affected them, causing them to have a major depressive disorder. It shows, it helps show that there is a correlation between childhood trauma and health, health outcomes within adults on a biological level. Overall, the hypermethylization of this receptor gene reflects impaired response resulting in chronic stress or mental illness. Although the NR3C1 gene did not show much impact for being a potential reversal of epigenetic effects and FKBP5 showing greater promise for that, the NR3C1 gene could show potential for being a potential marker for therapy success. So therefore this gene should further be studied for therapy success results. Overall, the potential for studying the NR3C1 gene to expand our knowledge of mental disorders is significant. Studying the health outcomes on a biological level is important to our understanding of mental disorders. Future methods to study this gene could include improvement of analytical approaches as well as study design to increase the accuracy of results. Within many of the studies I talked about, there was no recorded methylation prior to induced stress and they were compared to typical levels, this could cause some error. So further studies in the future could involve a prior analyst or maybe full-time life studies of people. In general though, the epigenetic studies in psychiatry were might represent a promising approach to better understanding and treating mental disorders for our future by using this gene.